It has now been over a year since Armor Reforger released on PC and Xbox, and after a plethora of bug fixes, changes to conflict, and continued updates, I still find myself learning new things. And that got me thinking. If I could go back to being a new player, what kind of tips do I know now that I wish I knew back then when I first started playing? So in today's video, I want to do just that. And I actually came up with 19 tips that I discovered through blood, sweat, and tears. Hey, why you gotta let me out on the shooting side? I got the radio if you need to respawn. Oh, where's my radio? The first tip I have comes from the medical update that was just released a few weeks ago. With the new update, bandages, tourniquets, morphine, and sailing bags are all critical for staying alive on the battlefield. In order to get access to these supplies in conflict, a field hospital needs to be deployed by a sergeant at a cost of 650 supplies, which can make the medic role a little bit difficult if you run out of bandages. But there's actually a small loophole that anyone can take advantage of, and that is to spawn an ambulance at the light vehicle depot where you can stock up on a little bit of everything. As a new player, I remember my frustration after spending 10 minutes on equipping the perfect loadout and later getting killed, only to find that I spawned back in with the default loadout and had to re-equip everything all over again. Little did I know, you can go to any equipment box and save your current equipment as a loadout, including medical supplies. In the past, players would exploit this feature by stealing enemy uniforms and spawning in with their equipment. So now the feature only works for items that belong to your faction. Just remember to select your save loadout before you spawn back in, which I sometimes forget to do to this day. In order to win a game of conflict, you have to hold several key locations on the map, which shows how many you currently have compared to your opponents. For Everon, you have to hold five locations and two for Arland. As embarrassed as I am to admit this, it was never really clear to me which locations those were until recently, when I realized that it's been staring me right in the face this whole time. It's the purple ones. Where things become nuanced are the points in between, where you need to make sure you have a clear radio signal to these objectives. Everybody loves getting points for capturing an objective, and in conflict, raking up to at least sergeant is critical if you want to build certain fortifications and spawn certain vehicles like the BTR or Armored Humvee. Most people get by just fine with going to each objective and capturing it, but did you know that you can actually rank up faster if you assign the objective in the objectives menu? You actually get about 10% additional points for doing so, and the additional benefit is that it helps to let the rest of your team know just what the heck you're up to in case somebody is nearby and wants to help out. In just about every game of conflict, I see someone asking questions about what the base defended notification means. Did an enemy just try to attack it? Did an enemy get within the perimeter and leave? What gives? This is actually a small bonus for hanging around your base, as it counts as you defending it. You'll even get additional points for killing enemies while you're defending as well. With that being said, this is only a small bonus. The real points are made by capturing objectives and delivering supplies. After a year of playing Conflict, I've noticed that there seems to be some etiquette on where buildings are placed within your base. One of the most important early game buildings is the Armory and the Light Vehicle Depot, particularly where the Light Vehicle Depot gets placed in proximity to the Armory and the surrounding terrain. The main thing you want to do with the Light Vehicle Depot is to make sure that it's placed on flat terrain, otherwise this happens. Hey, I knew it. I knew it. Secondly, you want to have it facing the main direction you'll be taking out of your base, which is typically on a road. And lastly, setting up your armory as close as possible to the light vehicle depot makes it easier and more efficient to spawn in a vehicle and load it up with supplies. Speaking of loading your vehicle up with supplies, almost every vehicle has trunk space that you can access and put your equipment in. Instead of searching around the vehicle for the action prompt, you can simply open up your inventory and access your vehicle's trunk from there within the vicinity. And the fastest way to get a vehicle loaded is to park it near the armory, set your items on the ground, and use the vicinity to move everything into your vehicle. Voila! No more running back and forth with items one at a time. Did you know that you can add and remove attachments to your weapons? When I first started playing, I didn't. This is helpful for removing scopes from marksman rifles and the M16, so that they can be used in close quarters. 
When I first learned about this, I thought you had to do this through the inventory screen, which can be a little overwhelming in tense situations. Turns out, there's an even easier and faster way of doing this, and that is through using the inspect weapon feature. If you're on PC, the default keys are control plus R, and right bumper plus X on the Xbox. This next tip comes from the School of Hard Knocks. I think games over the years have helped us develop bad habits by instilling in us that we're the main character and nothing bad will ever happen because hey, the main character always wins. So we run headfirst into firefights and take ridiculous risks that we never would in real life. These bad habits might work for single player games where the AI wait patiently for you to kill them, conveniently missing most of their shots, but it's a whole other story when facing off against other human players. In real life, we humans are an intelligent force to be reckoned with, and in war, we can get quite creative with how we keep ourselves out of danger. That is to say, by using any and every advantage at our disposal. And one of the biggest causes of player deaths within PvP games like Armory Forger? Well, that might just be peeking the same spot twice. A really bad habit that single player games have instilled in us over the years. The truth is, in tactical shooters like Arma, if someone is firing at you, there's a really good chance that they know where you are. And if you need to take a peek in order to discover their position, well, that's a great way to get your face blown off because they have the upper hand and only need to wait for your next move. So in Armor Reforger, I have found that the best way to stay alive is by adopting the mindset that your enemy has their sights trained on your position anytime you take fire from them. Therefore, it's best to reposition as inconspicuously as possible before trying to locate them. If they're waiting for you to peek, but don't see you relocate, then it's just a matter of time before they get impatient and start moving around, making it easier for you to get the drop on them. With the new Infusion engine, the lighting in Reforger has incredible dynamic range. And with that dynamic range comes some incredibly dark nights. Now at the time of this recording, we don't yet have flares to lighten up our paths. And turning on any form of light is a great way to get spotted by your enemy within the darkness. But did you know that you can use this to your advantage? In Reforger, you can turn on your flashlight and set it on the ground to create a decoy, or even establish a small light perimeter to help you defend or attack positions. At 51 square kilometers, vehicles are an essential part of getting around Everon, but they can be noisy and give away your position, allowing your enemy to gather themselves for a defense. The vehicle simulation in the Infusion engine allows you to do some pretty cool things too, from shooting holes in fuel tanks and running them dry to manipulating gear ratios and the stiffness of the suspension. One of the most useful features at our disposal when approaching an objective in a vehicle is to turn off the engine, where you can use your momentum to coast in quietly so your enemies don't hear you coming from a thousand meters away. In the beginning, it used to be that supplies at your main base would restock very quickly, allowing it to be an easy supply point for your logistic runs. However, after a few updates, Bohemia has made supplies a critical part of defending and assaulting positions, plus how you get supplies has changed too. As a new player, it can be a bit confusing to know where you're supposed to get these supplies. Nowadays, they're located at supply depots that are guarded by the FIA. To find them, simply look for the little green icon that looks like a sideways E. Here, you can gather an unlimited amount of supplies. Just be careful for the FIA, who will retake these locations after a certain period of time. Running supplies may not sound very exciting to most people, but it's one of the most useful activities you can do for your team, and not just because of building up a base with services. After you make Corporal, you can start setting up defensive objects like sandbags and razor wire, and one of the most useful features of the supply truck is the ability to build these defenses outside of the base radius. Once you level up to sergeant, you can start placing fortifications like machine gun nests, bunkers, and checkpoints anywhere you want. For example, you can create a forward operating base out of your mobile HQ and defend it, should it ever be discovered. Or you can place bunkers overlooking an objective roadblocks cutting off an entire section of town, and even ambush locations along the road. If you ever come across an enemy fortification that is blocking access to a resource or needs to be destroyed, do it with the supply truck. All you need to do is drive your supply truck within range and delete the objects in question. Doing so also deposits those supplies back into your supply truck, allowing you to reallocate those resources elsewhere. Need to spawn somewhere nearby an objective, but you can't, even though you have the points? 
The problem may just be that no one has built an antenna at that location yet. You can tell because the base will have this icon, indicating that it does not have a proper radio signal. Antennas cost 650 supplies, so in order to build one, you will first need to build a supply depot, which expands your available resources from 500 to 5000. In most cases, you can do this with a single supply truck, provided no one has used resources elsewhere. Speaking of the antenna, one of the most effective resources available to you is the ability to spawn on someone carrying a radio backpack. By default, there are only two radio backpacks that can be active at a single time. So when you go to the command tent to pick one up, it will prevent you from taking one if both radios are already activated. You can actually get around this limitation by going to the antenna tent and equipping a radio backpack from there. However, there is still a limitation of two radios that can be activated. The main benefit of doing this is so that your radio will become activated should one of the first two radio men get killed. This way, you will always have someone with a radio that you can spawn on. However, this might change in the future, since rumor has it that spawning on radios is going to change significantly. There aren't many situations you'll find yourself in where you'll need to cross a body of water while being protected by armor, but if you ever do, it's good to know that the BTR actually is amphibious. In fact, I've tested out many vehicles by driving them into the sea only to have them sink to the bottom. However, the BTR? That thing floats like you'd expect it to, and it can be piloted to wherever you want to go. The only issue is that the water is not displaced, so inside the BTR looks a little silly. If you play conflict as the United States, chances are that you've heard comms erupt in panic at the sound of an approaching BTR from the Soviets. But fret not, 50 cal mounted jeeps are pretty cheap to deploy and they shred right through the BTR like a hot knife through butter, totally killing the crew and occupants. So if you ever hear that a BTR is coming, just spawn in a 50 cal jeep and wait with a big smile on your face. And finally, the last thing I wish I knew about Reforger was that it isn't like most games where the communications between each side is safely quarantined off from each other. Not only does everything you say over the radio also get broadcast in local chat, the enemy can hear everything you're saying too. And in Reforger, this fact is taken even further because you can pick up an enemy radio and listen to everything they're saying on that channel, which means they can do the same to you. So this was my list of tips that I wish I knew when I first started playing Reforger. And I'm curious if you've got any tips that I might not know about. If you do, let everyone know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Ironbeard, and I'll see you on the battlefield.